What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today we're going to make this effect in Adobe Photoshop. Dread Labs. So before we start the video, I just wanted to let you know that you can get the Photoshop file for this video and all of my other tutorials by becoming a patron. Check out the link down in the description or stick around till the end of the video to learn more. Alright, so in this video we're going to talk about how to achieve this plastic looking effect in Adobe Photoshop. We're mainly going to talk about the bevel and emboss layer style and a technique that I use to manipulate it a little bit in order to create this 3D kind of effect around the text to make it look like it's actually popping out of the background, if that makes sense. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is make a new document, 3000 by 3000 pixels, that's what I usually work in, and we're gonna create a new gradient layer. And the color for this doesn't really matter, I just go with like a nice blue one. And let's make it radial. And basically the idea is to make this uh, as neutral as possible. We don't run a lot of contrast in the background, so we're gonna scale it up a lot. So you can still see there's some difference in the colors, but not a lot. Something like this should be fine. So we're gonna call this background. And next I'm gonna go add in some text and the font that I'm using is called BTE Sporty. first thing I'm going to do is actually group this font and I'm going to explain to you later in the video why but just know for now we're going to apply effects on the group and not the text here so let's select the group call this inner text and what we're going to do is go to the effects tab at the bottom of our layer panel and go to bevel and emboss so this opens up the layer style panel you're probably familiar with this um, what I'm going to do is reset this to default so you can follow along. Essentially, the bevel and emboss is used to create a certain 3D effect on your text, looking as if it has some edges and uh, make it look like it's 3D and coming at you. So we're not going to go over the style and the technique too much. I'm just going to go with an inner bevel and a smooth technique. And that essentially means that if we up the size, you can kind of see a like 3D edge around our text. And that's what we're going for. So let me just explain a couple of the settings here. So the higher the depth, the harder the edges are going to be. As you can see, this doesn't really look that realistic anymore. And we can actually soften this back up with the soften. As you can see, this now looks a little bit more realistic because this uh, softens up the difference between the highlights and the shadows here. So let's just bring this back a little bit, as well as the depth. And you already saw what I did with the size. This essentially means how far in you're going to have your bevel and emboss. And if you go too high, you're going to get this. And this is essentially not what you want. So let's go back and create a nice little edge around our text, something like this. Let's make it a little bit lower actually. And let's up the depth a little bit. So uh, just for the sake of this, I'm just gonna go and change my color of the text to 50% gray almost. So you can see what's going on with the bevel and emboss because we have a highlight and a shadow everywhere. And placement of these shadows and highlights is determined by the angle. So if we rotate the angle, you can see that the shadows and highlights are rotating with us. And for now, uh, I'm just gonna keep mine at 90, so it's basically uh, going up. And also you have the altitude, and the altitude is something that I rather don't touch, but basically this means uh, like how far in the uh, lighting goes. So if you up or lower this, you're mainly going to get a little bit too much highlights or shadows. Let me just demonstrate that. For example, now it's zero, you cannot see the shadows anymore. And at like 90, you're gonna see, you don't see any highlights anymore. So I generally keep this at 30. So another thing we need to consider is the gloss contour. The gloss contour is basically how many times uh, the reflection is going around the edges here. Usually I just go with either the normal default gloss contour, which we have here, or the ring. And this gives off a more chrome look. Uh, you probably see this in my chrome type tutorials as well. But for now, we're going to keep it at default. So we're going to up the opacity of the highlights a little bit because this is a very like, light artwork. And also what I'm going to do is change the color of the shadows from black to a blue. And this is just so that it blends in a little bit better with the background because we, we're going for a subtle effect here. As you can see, the shadow is a lot less harsh now. The next thing I'm going to do is actually make the gray areas here invisible. And the way we're gonna do that is by going to the layer menu and removing the fill from 100% to zero. So essentially this is the same as opacity, 
but what this does is this keeps the layer styles visible. So now all we're seeing is the bevel and emboss on our text without any of the content that was actually already there before we applied the layer styles. All right, just to add a little bit more depth in here, we're going to also add an inner shadow. So I'm going to reset this to default so you can see what this is. Uh, actually, if we up the distance a little bit, you can kind of see what's going on. Essentially, this makes a duplicate of our visible layer and, you know, you can push that down in whatever direction. So I'm going to move this angle to somewhere in the top left. And you might see when you change this that the bevel and emboss is changing with you. And to turn that off, you can just turn off the checkboxes use global light. So I'm going to go here, up the size a little bit, maybe lower the distance just a little bit. So we have like all of the parts here sitting in the corner. And this kind of looks out of place because it's colored black. So let's change that to blue. And this basically results in a little bit more depth inside the texture so that it's not all a flat blue color. All right, so now the reason why I went with a group and applying the layer styles to a group instead of the text. Essentially, if we zoom in, there's a pretty hard edge here. And we can actually change that by adding a drop shadow to the text. So let's just reset this to default again. So we're going to change the blend mode to normal and have the opacity at 100%. And what I'm actually going to do is up the fill here again and make the layer styles a little bit invisible. So we can actually see what we're doing inside the group here. So again, we'll go back to the drop shadow and add some size and we'll keep the distance at zero. And let's just make the fill color of the shadow the same color as our uh, text here. Essentially, we're adding in some pixel data and also uh, softening that up a little bit, as you can see. If we up the spread a little bit, you can see that we now have softened edges around our text. So this is after and this is before. Essentially, because this is inside a group, all the layer styles applied to the group will apply to this softened edge as well. And this doesn't work if you just do it all on the text uh, altogether. Let's turn on the effects again. And we'll remove the fill. And you'll see that the edges are a lot softer now. So let me show this again uh, with all the effects applied and then turning off the drop shadow. This is with the hard edge and this is with the soft edge. And let's make it a little bit smaller perhaps. So something like this is good. It's just a little subtle detail, but I really like this technique. Now, the second thing we need to do is have that edge around our uh, border where it looks like it's like pushed out of the plastic a little bit. So let's duplicate our text here by holding Alt or Option on our keyboard and dragging this to the top of our layer menu. And we should now have a duplicated text. Let's group this and call it group outer text. And for now we can turn off the drop shadow and remove the fill on the group. And all we're gonna do is add a bevel and emboss to our group here. I just want to demonstrate something because some people in the comments might want to point out that there is actually an outer bevel function in Photoshop embedded and that's true but it doesn't give you the same result. So just to give you an idea these are the two methods compared. The top one is the outer bevel which you can get access to by you know going to the bevel and emboss menu and changing the style of inner bevel to outer bevel and this bottom one is my method, which is using the drop shadow technique that I just demonstrated. So my personal preference goes out to the bottom one here, uh, as I think it just looks a little bit more realistic, I guess. Let's turn the drop shadow back on of the top layer, and we're gonna add some size to this drop shadow. So as you can see, the higher the size is, and the harder the spread, the more of these outer emboss uh, effects you can see. And let's go back to the bevel and emboss. So if you want this look to be like, now it kind of looks like it's pushing out. If you wanted it to push inward, you can just change it to down here. And now it kind of looks like it's like pushed into the actual plastic, if that makes sense. So yeah, I just leave this choice up to you. I feel like this one is looking a little bit better, but yeah. Essentially, this is the effect that we want to go for. And you can also go back and change in the, you know, sizes and spreads of the drop shadows in order to determine how hard or soft you want the edges to be. So let's just collapse all of these groups a little bit so we have some more order in the layer menu here. And the last thing I want to do to top this off is using a little bit of grain to, you know, 
add some texture to this artwork. Okay, so what I'm gonna use is an easy noise overlay action that's actually for free. So if you wanna get this for yourself, you can get the free download by the link in the description. I'm just gonna go pl click play here. And as you can see, this adds some grain, but it's a little bit too harsh. So let me just lower the opacity to 50%. And by pressing Control or Command M, going to change the contrast a little bit in the curves menu. So to make this effect just a little bit more subtle. And there you have it. All right, guys, so this was a tutorial on how to create this 3D Y2K embossed text. I hope you learned something. If you want to get the Photoshop files for this, you can actually become a patron of mine. So if you don't know, thanks to my patrons, I'm actually able to give you guys a free tutorial every week. As a thank you, you'll get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials, including this one, a 15% discount in my asset web store, as well as an exclusive Discord role in the Dreadlabs Discord community. If you want to get access to exclusive tutorials, such as how to start your own clothing brand, how to make a Y2K Ray Flyer, and how to create death metal logos, then the upper tier patrons is also for you. And I would highly recommend becoming one of the upper tier patrons. So if you want to become one yourself, there's a link down in the description. If you don't have the budget to support Dreadlabs this way, that's completely fine, because leaving a like, a comment and a subscribe if you haven't already, also does a lot. So with all of that being said, this was Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.